Okay, hi there, welcome to the second in our series, a little series of three videos updating you on the impact of government subsidies. In the second video, we're going to go step by step through the process of drawing an analysis diagram on subsidies, and that's to help you to get the best marks, to get you great marks in your assignments. Quick reminder, a subsidy is any form of government support offered to producers, occasionally consumers. We're going to focus on producers in this video. And the key point is that uh, a subsidy lowers the cost of supply to a producer. And it normally leads to an increase in the output sold at a lower market price to the consumer. But as we'll see, the producer, even if they cut the price, they know they're going to get the subsidy on top, which therefore uh, helps them. So how can we show the impact of a subsidy to producers using a supply and demand diagram? Well, here's our diagram. P1 is the initial free market market clearing equilibrium price in the absence of any government intervention. So consumers pay P1 and the output bought and sold is Q1. Now, crucially, a subsidy means that the government pays part of the cost. So, for example, the government might offer a subsidy to cover some other firm's wage costs or cover the cost of purchasing fertilizer for a farmer or construction materials for a builder, for example. So if the input costs go down, the effect, Ketterer's power of a subsidy, is to shift the supply curve to the right, leading, and, and the subsidy, by the way, is the difference between the, the two supply curves. So the subsidy per unit is the vertical distance between the two supply curves. And the impact of a subsidy is to shift the supply curve out to the right, leading to a new equilibrium price and quantity, P2, Q2. And I've put in there again the subsidy per unit. That's going to be quite important to get the top marks on analysis. The subsidy per unit is the vertical distance between the two supply curves. So the consumer uh, will pay price P2. Okay, Consumer will pay price P2. Uh, that's quite important. OK, uh, so in that sense, the consumer saves money because the producer is willing and able to cut the price. But the producer will get P2 plus the subsidy. You see, the government's going to offer a subsidy per unit equal to that vertical distance. So if the consumer pays P2, the producer will get P2 plus the subsidy per unit, which if you draw up and draw across equals price P3. So the, the supplier, the producer, the manufacturer receives the price P2 plus the subsidy per unit, which equals P3. Producers are better off. They're now selling more Q2 and they're getting a higher price than they, they got before P3 rather than P1. Now, what about the cost to the government? Well, the government, of course, is paying for the subsidy. And the government will pay the subsidy per unit multiplied by the quantity bought and sold. So the subsidy cost or spend is equal to P3, P2 multiplied by output Q2. So it's the orange shaded area. Now, what's the impact of a subsidy? Uh, how is the impact of a subsidy influenced by the elasticity of demand? So here's our original diagram. The price goes down from P1 to P2 and the quantity goes up from Q1 to Q2. The impact of a subsidy is dependent in part, or well, partly on the how big the subsidy is, but also the elasticity of demand. So I've drawn here a fairly inelastic demand. Can you see that? Demand curve is now much less responsive to changes in price. And for a given subsidy, let's go back a slide, same no sh same shift in supply each time. That was the original demand curve. Quite a big change in quantity. But if demand is relatively price inelastic, the same change in price leads only to a very small change in expansion of demand when the price comes down. So subsidies tend to be less effective in terms of increasing quantity when demand is relatively price inelastic. Now compare that diagram with the next slide. 
Here you can see demand is much more price sensitive, it's more price elastic. Again, for the same subsidy, the price comes down from P1 to P2, and it has quite a big effect on the equilibrium quantity bought at a lower price. So if demand is highly price sensitive, it's only going to take a relatively small change in price, in this case from P1 to P2, for the quantity to increase quite substantially. And again, developing the analysis, you then want to show how much the government spends on the subsidy. Well, there's the subsidy per unit, the vertical distance. So the consumer pays P2, the producer gets P3. So that's the, the total cost to the subsidy. Little exam hint, students typically find it quite difficult to correctly identify the total amount spent by government on a subsidy. So please, please make sure you practice these subsidy diagrams regularly, properly, uh, so you can draw it accurately and then apply it well before, before taking one of your assignments. Okay, in the third and final little part of our trilogy on subsidies, we're going to spend a few minutes evaluating some of the costs and benefits of subsidy as a form of intervention. Okay, thank you.